And thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 5. Although the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise, now topping 3,500, we are hearing some good news from health officials today. Our Amanda Quintana joins us now with the details. Amanda? The big message from DHS officials today is safer at home is working. Practicing social distancing is beginning to flatten the curve. Today they released this graph showing Wisconsin was projected to have 22,000 infections by April 8th, resulting in between 440 and 1,500 deaths. But as you can see, the safer at home order has significantly decreased those numbers. There are currently more than 3,500 cases in the state. 173 people have died from complications of the the virus, including the first deaths reported in Dodge and Adams counties, the 13th death in Dane County, and the fourth deaths in Rock and Sauk counties. But some more good news. Back in early March, the number of infections were doubling every 3.4 days. Now, over the past two weeks, it's doubling just about every 12 days. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. Some technical issues there. In a historic, extraordinary session, the state assembly has passed a bill to help the state respond to the coronavirus. Okay, we're hoping to go to Amy Reed for a live report. We don't have that. We'll go to her in just a moment. But next at five, millennials are being called the new lost generation because of the economic downturn they're facing. A new report by Data for Progress looks at the staggering financial impact of the coronavirus. It found 52% of people under the age of 45 have lost a job and put on leave or had their hours reduced due to the pandemic. That's compared with 26% of people 45 and over. Wisconsin U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin has sent a letter to the president urging him to quickly deliver the personal protective equipment and medical supplies needed to Wisconsin. Well, I believe strongly that the president should have invoked the full authorities under the Defense Production Act. Um, instead, while he signed a, an executive order, uh, he hasn't uh, used the full authorities. In, and, uh, in that letter, Senator Baldwin says Wisconsin has received only a fraction of the supplies it has requested from the Department of Health and Human Services and from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. She goes on to say that Wisconsin has not received a single ventilator as well as the full amount of PPE requested for the state's essential workers. Millions of Americans are feeling the pain of the pandemic. More than 1,000 people died yesterday, bringing the total in the country to 23,000. But still, hospitalizations over the last three days have gone down in New York. A total of seven medical crew members on the Navy hospital ship USNS Mercy have now tested positive for coronavirus. This after four more were diagnosed over the weekend. The ship docked in the port of Los Angeles in late March to help LA area hospitals with the COVID-19 response. The Navy says the seven affected crew members are currently isolated off the ship. In a historic, extraordinary session, the state assembly has passed a bill to help the state respond to the coronavirus. Amy Reed joins us live from the Capitol to show us how lawmakers were able to make it happen. Amy? Because of social distancing requirements, fewer than half of the representatives were able to come here physically to the Capitol, instead calling in on Skype to vote. This led to a somewhat tedious and drawn out process where voting took about 10 minutes. Normally, it only takes a couple. In the end, all but two lawmakers voted to approve a bill with more than 50 provisions in it. In addition to waiving the one week waiting period for unemployment benefits, this legislation allows the state access to federal response money. It mandates testing for coronavirus with no copay and it sets aside 75 million dollars for the joint finance committee to hand out as needed later assembly leaders struck a note of cooperation and hope when they addressed the room while our politics are dysfunctional and at times may be broken the public is looking to elected officials uh, to lead to those who worry about the foundations of our republic i say keep the faith we will return to normal we will get through this Democrats tried to add an amendment on the floor that would remove voter ID requirements and move the remainder of the elections in 2020 to vote by mail elections. Those were almost immediately tabled. The Senate is scheduled to take up this bill in the continuation of the extraordinary session tomorrow morning. Then, assuming that they pass it, we'll move on to the governor's desk, and we haven't heard yet how he'll act on it. 
President Trump heard from health care executives and listened to stories from COVID-19 survivors as he prepares to announce a new council to help it eventually issue new recommendations to reopen the country. The president also slammed congressional Democrats on Twitter, demanding they replenish the Paycheck Protection Program now. Democrats say they will not budge from their push to include more money for states and hospitals on top of the request for an additional $250 billion for the popular small business loan program. State officials are rescinding a memo that called for the end of window visits at assisted living facilities in Wisconsin. Yesterday, the Wisconsin Board on Aging and Long-Term Care issued a memo asking residents to stop making window visits at care facilities, saying that the staff and residents in those facilities are at high risk of contracting the coronavirus. The decision was overturned this morning. The board does encourage those who want to spend time with family or friends who live in care facilities to do so via video chat whenever possible. The airports are set to receive federal aid from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Federal Aviation Administration since they are losing millions of dollars due to the COVID-19 crisis. Nearly $84 million will be given to 87 airports statewide. Dane County Regional will get about $15 million as part of the $10 billion CARES Act. That is the Trump administration's Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. Act, the money will help fund the continued operations of airports and also keep workers jobs. Friends of State Street families are doing something good by helping out the homeless population in times of need. FSSF is setting up tables with free snacks, water, and hygiene products, among other things, for the homeless population in downtown Madison. Usually, the group would go up and down State Street helping out, but are unable to due to social distancing. I think it's it's helping just that little bit and that's that's all anyone can do right now and is just help that little bit so if you're able to we'd, we'd greatly appreciate the assistance the organization is looking for donations you can find out how to donate by heading to their Facebook page friends of the State Street family a strange spring day out there between the sunshine and snow showers let's check your first one forecast chief meteorologist Gary Canalta Gary uh, last time I checked the calendar, it was mid-April, but uh, you're right. We've had some snow showers and flurries there. You can see, this is, when you see those popcorn nature of the clouds there with breaks in between them, that's when you get these intermittent little bursts of snow showers and flurries with some sunshine in between. That just shows a lot of instability aloft just because the air is very cold aloft, even though it's chilly near the ground. As we look at Doppler track, you can see these light snow showers and flurries. The good news about these is they tend to die out pretty quickly. Once the sun goes down, you lose the heating uh, at the, the ground. There's not much heat at the ground. Right now, Madison at 32, Janesville at 37, but to the north, a few places are right around the 30 degree mark, especially those areas that are getting those snow showers. And wind chills in mid April are still in the lower 20s. By tomorrow morning, the skies will clear. Temperatures will be down in the lower 20s. Look for variably cloudy skies tomorrow. A slight chance of a flurry or a snow shower in the afternoon. High temperatures still at 39, but good news, we've got warm up uh, conditions on the way for the end of the week. I'll have more details and weather in a few minutes. A Rock County woman is in jail following a stabbing incident in Janesville late last night. Janesville police say 22-year-old Myla Braxton stabbed a man following a dispute in the 300 block of Park Avenue. Braxton faces charges of aggravated battery while armed and a probation violation. The stabbing victim was released from the hospital with minor injuries. Firefighters spent more than five hours putting out a fire started by an abandoned campfire. Madison firefighters say someone called 911 after noticing smoke coming from a wooded area. This was was near the 4100 block of Westerfield Lane. About 9 o'clock yesterday morning, crews found logs burning about a half mile into some woods there. Firefighters say strong winds and the remote location of that fire made it difficult to put out. They used about 1,200 feet of hose to reach the fire. No one was around at the time that that fire was discovered. Former President Barack Obama is endorsing Joe Biden for president. And that's why I'm so proud to endorse Joe Biden for President of the United States. Choosing Joe to be my Vice President was one of the best decisions I ever made, and he became a close friend. And I believe Joe has all the qualities we need in a President right now. 
Obama released a 12-minute video today endorsing his former vice president. That gives Biden the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, a boost from the party's biggest fundraiser and one of its most popular figures. Obama and Biden are known to be close friends from their two terms in the White House. Turnout for the 2020 spring election was the third highest in spring elections in more than a decade. The Wisconsin Elections Commission says unofficial turnout was 34.3%. That's about seven percentage points higher than turnout in last year's spring election is the third highest turnout for spring elections in more than a decade beaten out by the 2016 and 2008 spring elections which were both dual party presidential preference primaries the turnout coincided with record absentee voting the commission reported 1.1 million absentee ballots were cast statewide ahead at five online dating apps are seeing a spike in users but the reasons for it are deeper than you what might what what you might think and coming up tonight at six health officials in rock county are sharing more information about positive cases of coronavirus why some first responders Responders say it is not enough. That story at six. And the Dow surging in Tuesday trading up some 559 points, climbing back near the 24,000 mark. The Nasdaq jumps 323. The S&P gains 84. And we'll be right back. Wouldn't it be nice to not have to deal with your messy gutters anymore? Leave that nasty chore in the rear view mirror with a new LeafGuard gutter system. Hi, I'm Andrew Larson, owner of Larson Home Services. My team would love to show you how LeafGuard's patented design keeps leaves and debris out so you can give up cleaning your gutters forever. And now is the best time to get LeafGuard. Order now and get free installation labor, free financing for 12 months, and a $100 Visa gift card with your purchase. Call now to set up a free estimate. We asked real customers what they really love about Spectrum Internet and TV. Spectrum Internet has the fastest speeds for everything I do. There is no turning wheel. It's immediate. Spectrum is the fastest. Bam. <laughs> Get the fastest download speeds with the most reliable performance with Spectrum Internet, delivering starting speeds of 200 megabits. That's more than enough for all your devices for $44.99 a month. Call 833-906-4499. I can't get over how much on-demand Spectrum has. I can literally watch a new movie every night. Boom. This is my position all day. <laughs> I got all my shows, and he's got all his shows. With the Spectrum TV app, I can watch live TV anywhere. It's perfect. Add Spectrum TV and enjoy more free HD and more free on-demand. Plus, use the Spectrum TV app to watch live TV on the go, all from $44.99 a month. Call 833-906-4499. The fact that they don't have contracts, that says a lot about their service. I love it. Get Spectrum Internet and TV from $44.99 a month each with no contracts. Call 833-906-4499 today. together through tough times is a Wisconsin tradition. In fact, adversity seems to bring out the best in us. EdVest is no different. During these times, our dedication to your higher education goals remains as strong as ever. Hi, it's Jan from Toyota. As part of your community, we're here to help you during these challenging times. Keeping your Toyota safe and reliable is important, especially right now. Many of our service centers are open. Schedule service online and drop off and pick up your vehicle with no contact. Need to replace your old vehicle? Most Toyota dealers offer online shopping and will defer your first payment for 90 days. We're here for you. Contact your local Toyota dealer to see how they can help. Toyota. Tonight at 6, UW Health recognizing their crews that disinfect hospital rooms will share how they're preventing the spread of COVID-19. And Wisconsin lawmakers meet in an extraordinary session to discuss a proposed coronavirus response bill. Our mental health is just as important as our physical health, especially right now. If you're feeling anxious, stop for a few moments, turn off, unplug, and breathe. Take care of yourself and remember, we're all in this together. This pandemic has impacted everything in our lives, including the way we date. Online dating apps have seen a surge in users in the past few weeks. On March 29th, Tinder said it recorded more than 3 billion swipes, the most swipes on any single day in its history. Usership there up 20%. Bumble has seen an 84% increase in voice calls and video chats. And Hinge launched a date from home feature, which sets up digital dates. And 70% of its users have used that feature. There are a lot of factors that have gone into the increased usership. Jamie Perez shows us some of the surprising reasons behind the trend. Jamie? 
a lot of these apps were founded on creating meaningful relationships and now that we're in quarantine that desire for human interaction is at an all-time high but there's a lot of other reasons why dating apps are seeing an increase in usership right now some of the reasons you might find particularly interesting this is what love on lockdown looks like. Our time in quarantine has caused a spike in usership of dating apps, but not all of that increase is from people who are relation shopping or trying to self-isolate and chill. Recently been using dating apps as a term uh, or as a form of entertainment. Brooke Wilczewski is the Bumble campus director at UW-Madison. She says as a cure for boredom, many have been using this time to play Bumble or play Tinder. That basically means swiping and seeing who matches with you without any expectation of forming any sort of meaningful relationship. It's also being used to entertain others through other social media platforms. Which is a trend that a lot of people have been doing right now as well, is messaging lyrics to a song and seeing if their matches continue it um, in a bid to try to get fame and on TikTok, which is hilarious because every single one of those videos do wind up going viral. This is fascinating. Catalina Toma is a professor of communication science at UW-Madison. She was just as fascinated with this trend as I was. That makes a lot of sense to me. We're actually working on, uh, on a research project about people's propensity to play games during COVID. Usership on dating apps may be up right now, but that's because of a lot of reasons. On top of those who are trying to form romantic relationships, Toma said it's also been used as a way to curb loneliness, make friends, validate someone's desire to feel wanted, and with the increase in domestic violence and divorce rates right now, those people are also turning to dating apps. This could be a driver of some individuals going to online dating sites as well, you know, to see who's out there in case my partner completely drives me crazy and I want to leave them. While there may be this darker side to usership increasing, Wilczewski said this could actually benefit users in the future. I think that this is really, really incredible for dating because what we've seen in hookup culture as some of the frustration has been is there doesn't seem to be a real need for these truly emotionally intimate connections rather than just physically intimate. Whether dating from home will continue as a trend past quarantine We'll just have to wait and see. I hope it does. I can't say it ultimately will or won't, but I think it provides a great opportunity for it to do so. So there's definitely some benefits to what's happening right now, but as far as this continuing past quarantine, Toma says that she's not so sure. She thinks that by the time we're done self-isolating, the desire for people to have in-person meetings will be so great that it's really difficult to tell if video chatting and digital dating will be a continuing trend beyond this. It is interesting. A lot is going to change when this is all over. Jamie Perez joining us live. Jamie, thank you. The death toll from the storm system that rolled across the south and up the east coast Monday is up to at least 34 now. At least 12 died in Mississippi. Nine people were killed in storm-related accidents in South Carolina. Eight in Georgia, three in Tennessee, and one each in Arkansas and North Carolina. The Weather Service said the severe weather spawned at least 40 tornadoes from Texas all the way to South Carolina. Now states already grappling with the coronavirus pandemic are trying to recover from these storms. And many of those Georgians are already suffering from being out of work due to the COVID-19 virus. And now they have literally lost everything that they own. Radar data for the Weather Service suggests some tornadoes in Mississippi were on the ground for more than an hour and might have tracked at least 100 miles. Well, we had a few bursts of that snow today. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti now with our first warned forecast. Gary? Well, it's a good thing that we're getting snow right now instead of uh, severe weather because this is Tornado and Severe Weather Awareness Week in Wisconsin. And one of the things we want to talk about today is lightning. Um, the question is how close do you have to be to lightning to be struck? The answer is easy. If, you see, if you're close enough to see lightning, technically you're going to be close enough to be struck. I mean, there have been times where lightning has struck 10 to 15 miles away from the rain area. So just because it's not raining doesn't mean that you're not close enough to be uh, struck by lightning. But one way to find out how far the lightning is away from you is to measure the amount of seconds between the time you see the lightning flash and the time you hear the thunder, and then divide that by five. So if you count one 1,000, two 1,000, get to five 1,000, that's five seconds. You divide by five, and that lightning is one mile away from you. And then as far as a, a reasonable distance for safety, remember the 30-30 rule. So if there's less than 30 seconds from the time you see lightning until the time you, hit th you hear thunder, immediately go inside. And then wait 30 minutes after the last visible flash of lightning. So if 15 minutes go by, see another flash of lightning, that 30-minute countdown starts again. So wait until the lightning is gone before you go back outside. Right now, temperatures are unseasonably cold for April. We've been 
been below 40 degrees pretty much over the last 48 hours. And you can see wind chills at times have been down to about 20 degrees. Not bitterly cold, but still for mid-April, you don't want to see those numbers. Over the next 48 hours, our temperatures will go back up. This is just missing data here, but looks like we'll be back up into the 40s by the time we hit Thursday afternoon. And there's still snow on the ground, quite a bit of it from northwestern Iowa through southern Minnesota and northern central Wisconsin into much of the uh, upper peninsula of Michigan. Some areas east of Marquette or west of Marquette still have about 18 inches of snow on the ground just from this last storm. Three things you need to know in the forecast. There's a slight chance of snow showers or flurries again tomorrow afternoon, probably less than what we'll see today. Thursday and Friday still look to be dry and chilly with high temperatures in the mid to upper 40s, but milder conditions are on the way for the weekend. We could see high temperatures near 60 on Saturday and in the upper 50s with just a slight chance of a shower on Sunday. Right now on high resolution radar through southern Wisconsin, you can see these little snow showers and flurries. They don't amount to very much, but it may snow pretty hard for a minute or two that could reduce visibility. But eventually those uh, snow showers will come to an end as the sun goes down. We're still seeing that jet stream right out of central Canada into the Midwest. And that's going to keep our temperatures colder than normal, at least for the next few days. There's a warm front out to the west. This weather system will kind of tr track down to the south and east of us, keeping us on the cold side of the system, at least for the time being. As we check out future track, you can see those snow showers dying down quickly tonight. Skies will actually turn clear overnight. Long temperatures drop in the lower 20s. Tomorrow, a little more cloud cover, maybe a snow shower flurry popping back up. And then we repeat the process tomorrow night with clearing out. Thursday, though, we should see more sunshine and temperatures will be in the middle 40s. So for tomorrow, look for variably cloudy skies. There is a chance for a snow shower flurry in the afternoon. I'm still thinking the high temperatures won't hit uh, 40, 39 for the high, but back up to 46 on Thursday, 49 on Friday, and then temperatures closer to normal beginning this weekend and through much of next week. Very little in the way of precipitation chances, maybe a slight chance of a shower Sunday and a shower thunderstorm chance Wednesday afternoon of next week. Other than that, it looks like relatively quiet conditions and the warming weather, that'll be a plus too. All right, yeah, let's get through this, Gary. Thank you. Ahead on News now at 5, a Madison native returning home from Stanford for her final season on the basketball court. We'll tell you who it is after a short break. Three Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. When the doctor said mama wasn't going to get better, I didn't know what to do. I've never been through this before and I'm not ready. My brothers want to help, but how? I keep thinking, how will we get through this? A Grace will help with kind, capable caregivers at your door who know how to handle the tough moments ahead. A Grace, hospice and palliative care. When you don't know where to turn, call us. A Grace will help. Coming together makes us stronger, and Ford is built to lend a hand. Contact your Ford dealer, an essential part of your community, to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Find out more at Ford.com. Right now, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months, plus three months deferred payments on select 2020 Ford models. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us. With expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Take advantage of exceptional financing at your local Cub Cadet dealer today. To find the dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. Okay, everyone, our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Great tasting and sure, with 9 grams of protein, 27 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients to support immune health. Are you nervous about leaving your parents' phone plan? You got this. <laughs> you could have. It's just a plan. No. Individual plan phobia. Plan phobia? Mm-hmm. We got your back. Switch to your own plan at U.S. Cellular and get $400 back. Plan phobia? Mm -hmm. They got your back. Switch and get $400 back. Only at U.S. Cellular. Choose fair. If your windows are more than 10 years old, they could be drafty, difficult to operate, or costing you money. The Champion family is here to help. Right now, get 40% off your new windows. Call now or learn more at GetChampionWindows.com today. 
From our family to yours, we want to encourage you to keep going. Keep protecting what's most important. Keep hopeful in the face of all this. Keep believing. Keep being strong. Keep supporting the people on the front line. Keep staying together while staying apart. Keep being fearless. And most of all, keep dreaming. American Family Insurance is mailing our personal auto insurance customers a premium relief payment to help them keep going. We'll keep being here when you need us. Wisconsin's Zach Bond has told all 32 NFL teams that he tested positive for a diluted sample at the NFL Scouting Combine that he blamed on drinking too much water for weight-related weigh-in purposes. That's according to ESPN. Under the NFL's new collective bargaining agreement, it will not count as a strike against him, whereas it would have under the NFL's old CBA. Teams don't believe it'll impact Bond's status, and Mel Kuyper of ESPN projects him as a late first-round pick. A Madison native is coming back home for her final basketball season in college, Estella Moshkow, who graduated from Edgewood High School in 2017, announced on Twitter and Instagram she'll be playing her final basketball season for the Badgers. Moshkow spent her first three seasons playing for the Cardinal at Stanford. In high school, she helped Edgewood win a state championship in her senior year and was named Wisconsin's co-Miss Basketball. Former Wisconsin Badger Russell Wilson and his wife Sierra are expecting another child. Three, two, one. <laughs> It's the, boy. Boy. Yeah. the Seattle quarterback and his singer wife have one child together, Sienna, who will turn three later this month. Sierra also has a child, Future Zahir, with rapper Future. Congratulations to the couple. And their palm trees make me a little jealous. Final Shaggy, your first Warren forecast in just a moment. Stay with us. Do you know the secret to having the perfect lawn? Maple Leaf Landscaping does. With their six-step turf care program, you can have a beautiful lawn all season long. Check their website for special discounts and leave the yard work to Maple Leaf, your year-round property care experts. It started with one man and his father's simple advice. He said, son, make sure the quality of work is worthy of the family name. Over 20 years and thousands of clients later, Fry Construction still follows this advice, giving you the very best craftsmanship for roofing, windows, and gutters. If you want to trust the work done on your home, trust the family name that's behind it. Start with Fry Construction and Home Improvement at FryConstruction.com. When we face adversity, we find a way through it. It's about taking care of each other. It's the small parts that make a big difference. At Chevy, we promise to do ours. We're offering current Chevy owners OnStar Crisis Assist Services and complimentary Wi-Fi data. If you need a new Chevy, interest-free financing for 84 months with deferred payments for 120 days on many of our most popular models. You may even shop online and take delivery at home where available. It's just our way of doing our part. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home or the blistering heat of summer without power. Then having to make the tough choice between eating or meeting other basic survival needs. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision with no place else to turn, including those who are now unemployed due to the COVID-19 crisis. For a hand up and help with your utility bills now during these difficult times, contact the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund today. You know your gutters are full of gunk, and you know you need to deal with it eventually. With LeafGuard, you can give up cleaning your gutters forever. Hi, I'm Andrew Larson, owner of Larson Home Services. My team would love to show you how LeafGuard's patented design channels rainwater into your gutters while leaves, seeds, and other debris just roll off, leaving them clog-free, guaranteed. We looked at several different types of gutters, and we knew that we had problems with leaves. We have lots of trees around our house and I'm the one who goes and cleans out the gutters, and uh, I wanted to eliminate that hassle in the fall of cleaning the gutters, and LeafGuard has done a wonderful job. Love to hear that. Right now, your LeafGuard brand gutter system comes with some great money-saving extras. Order now and get free installation labor, free financing for 12 months, and call before this program is over and get a $100 Visa gift card with your new LeafGuard gutter system. Don't wait. Call now to schedule your free estimate. Do you know the secret to having the perfect lawn? Maple Leaf Landscaping does. With their six-step turf care program, you can have a beautiful lawn all season long. Check their website for special discounts and leave the yard work to Maple Leaf, your year-round property care experts. 
Tonight on the CBS Evening News, the nation's top infectious disease doctor, Anthony Fauci, says reopening the economy by May 1st is overly optimistic. The roadblock? testing and tracing. So we'll turn to one doctor who has written a plan to get Americans back to work. Plus the latest installment in our series, Racing for a Cure. Could a century old method of blood transfusion be the best hope for treatment? And the story of a gym CEO who is able to keep his employees on the payroll while keeping the facility closed. That's all tonight here on the CBS Evening News. Let's head to Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti for a final check of your forecast. Gary? Well, Charlotte, we still have those snow showers and flurries on high-resolution Doppler over southern Wisconsin, but those will die down pretty quickly after sunset. Current temperatures are very chilly, only 32 right now in Madison with wind chills in the lower 20s. By tomorrow morning, we'll be down into the lower 20s. The skies clear out. Tomorrow, look for highs in the upper 30s, but there could be a slight chance for a snow shower or flurry in the afternoon. After that, look for dry weather for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Temperatures warming from the mid-40s on Thursday into the upper 50s on Saturday. Next week, it will be mainly mild. All right, we're back at 30 minutes for News 3 Now at 6. Stay tuned now for the CBS Evening News.